Flirt First Wizard back at it again. I'm doing my review, my recap right now for UFC 132 Dominic Cruz versus Uriah Faber. But before I get into that business, Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis has pulled out of UFC 133, which starts the 6th of, of next month, August. Now Rashad Evans already. Um, his named opponent first was Leo de Machida, and Machida declined that fight. And Tito Ortiz has stepped in. Why? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, also, it seems like that Nate Marquardt's suspension has been lifted from the Athletic Commission, but there's talks that he's going to be fighting in Bellator against Hector Lombard without fighting in the main tournament format eventually. At least that's what I heard off of the, pot, the TJ DeSantis podcast for uh, Sure Dog. So, let's talk about it. Um, as a whole, this card, after the first four Facebook preliminary fights, was pretty damn good. Um, the Anthony, the uh, Andre winner Anthony and Jukwani fight, that was pretty fun too. It was more like a one-sided technical beatdown, though. But uh, right to the main event, Dominic Cruz um, retains his belt, his uh, bantamweight title belt, over Uriah Faber, and he did essentially what I thought he was going to do. Um, some people booed at the Buffalo Wild Wings I was at. Um, some guys, uh, there was someone sitting behind me that was like, this fight's terrible, or something. But uh, you'll either like his style or you won't. He, he did, like I said. What I thought he was going to do, he would shuffle in, drop his hands, and he would kind of bait you into trying to hit him, I mean, trying to bait your eye paper into trying to hit him, and then he would scoot away and land maybe one or two shots, and then go for a kneecap takedown whenever he wanted to, and basically did that. The only round that I had your eye paper winning was probably round four, maybe one, round one. It was close. Faber landed more power shots than I thought he was going to. Um, he looked pretty good in this in this fight. Uh, there were times when, whenever he would hit down to Cruz, though, where uh, for some reason he didn't follow up as much as I thought he could have, but Cruz was able to avoid any submission game and essentially grab the unanimous decision. What's next for Dominic Cruz after this fight? People are already calling for a um, a rubber match because there's already drama and there's history and they've already fought again. You can make a good story out of it on Spike. But I think, you know, let them fight some, someone else first. For Uriah Faber, maybe have him fight Miguel Torres, even though Miguel Torres is coming off of a loss. And for Dominic Cruz, the only guy I can think of right now really is Demetrius Johnson, who is already listed in the top five bantamweights in the world right now because of his victories o over Kid Yamamoto and Miguel Torres. So, um... And... Now Uriah Faber, I don't know, he's, um... He's still got some explosive wrestling that he can bring to the table, but he's now, I think, 0-3 and three in his last couple title fights. He's lost to Mike Brown, lost to Jose Aldo, and now he's lost to Dominic Cruz. So, um, uh, I'm not so sure what Uriah Faber's game plan was. Maybe he thought he was going to win easier that, uh, that night. Um, I know this is kind of late, but, um, uh, I was surprised that Uriah Faber wasn't throwing more leg kicks. The guy that's going to be Dominic Cruz has got to be someone who will time him with uppercuts whenever he dips his head really low, and someone who has really powerful leg kicks because they need to take away Dominic Cruz's movement. And for Cruz, I think he needs to work on his boxing a bit more and start to land more conventional strikes to do more damage rather than to just get points. So, good, good one for you, Dominic Cruz. Glad you won. All right. Vanderlei Silva versus Chris Lieben. Damn. I knew... I should have picked Chris Lieben. But the, cri the crippler cripples the axe burner in just a blistering 27 seconds into the first round. They got into a clinch. Uh, Vanderlei Silva, I for one thing for think that he attacked Chris Lieben the 
what was his game plan? To go out there and just throw big punches? Um, Lieben just kind of walked through that and then land, landed like five uppercuts in a row with that trademark left out, um, left that he likes to use. That's, um, he, Chris Lieben rebounded nicely from his loss to Brian Stan, and this is a disappointing follow-up for Vanderlei Silva. People are, call, are calling for his retirement, but he was just barely able to beat Michael Bisping. Um, that was, you know, 16 months ago, but he still did it. People are still call, calling for his retirement. I say give Vanderlei Silva maybe one or two fights against guys that he may, you know, that he may beat or that will give him some good competition, but he still is very picky, I know, about who he fights. So, that's something to consider. That's tough. I'm not so sure what's next for Chris Lieben. Maybe a rematch with Aaron Simpson. Um, but he's still doing his job as the go-to guy for action for the UFC when they need it. But there was plenty of action tonight. There were like five first round fin there were like five finishes and all of those finishes were in the first round. And okay, yeah, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Alright. Dennis Seaver versus Yeah, give Van Valley Silva one more fight and then hang the gloves up. Maybe open a gym uh, up up to or something. Now next fight, Vandalay I mean Dennis Seaver versus Matt Wyman. By the end of the fight, you know, people are saying Matt Wyman got robbed. Uh, I picked Dennis Seaver to win. Uh, I was surprised, honestly, when Dennis Seaver was announced the winner because um, the first round was Seaver. The second round went to Matt Wyman. He's got good takedowns and really powerful elbows. Like uh, Kenny Florian elbows that will just cut into guys. Either that or Dennis Seaver cuts really easily. But Matt Wyman, you know, he, he is kind of an under... Uh, rated lightweight. Um, he should. Pro he looked pretty good in this fight. He stormed out of the ring when he thought. I'm sure he thought he had won. I haven't watched it again. You know, if you give the. Uh, so really, this could have gone either way for me. Um, I thought Matt Wyman did enough to win at the end, but Seaver still takes it. So he's on, on a pretty good run. He needs to work on his takedown defense, though. So that's how it goes. Ne um, next fight, Tito Ortiz versus Ryan Bader. Wow. That's all I can say about that. I was sitting there, you know, I kept on saying to myself, I can't believe Tito Ortiz, the guy that got beat by Matt Hamill. Um, nothing against Matt Hamill, by the way. The guy who hadn't uh, won a fight in since 2006, and that was against Ken Shamrock. And the guy who hadn't finished a fighter not named Ken Shamrock since 2001 when he TKO'd Elvis Sinisic in um, Las Vegas, I think. He goes in there and he clocks Ryan Bader with a right hand and then chokes him out in a minute and 56 seconds. Great win for Tito Ortiz. You know, in a way, Dana White was both upset about this and happy about this because now they can build up the hype that, oh, Tito Ortiz, you know, um, when all the chips were down, he stuck in there and he got an impressive win. The Huntington Beach Bad Boy is not done in this game, and he's going to try for another run at John Jones' title. That's another fight on, on another day, so, yeah. As for Tito Ortiz right now, next, um, he's stepping up to take on Rashad Evans in a fight in which I haven't seen his first fight with Rashad Evans, but the consensus is that Tito Ortiz would have won that fight had he not grabbed the fence too long and been deducted points um, once or twice during the match. So maybe Tito Ortiz can get his revenge, but I wouldn't count on it right now. This is a good win, but uh, for Ryan Bader, let me see. Maybe give him a chain roller. Tough loss, man. You know, he needs to work on his submission defense. Now, next fight. Carlos Condit versus Dong Hyun Kim. Man, Carlos Condit, great job. I just... I, I gotta say, man, two highlight reel knockouts in a row in the first round, going out there and just, you know, uh, Dong Kim Kim took him down easily, that happened as we all expected it, and Carlos Condit swept him, got him in the guillotine choke from mount, and then moments later threw a high kick and then blasted Kim with a flying knee to the head and then punched his face repeatedly from the mount against the cage. It kind of looked like, um, 